I am proud to be called the mistress, the wife, the queen of Heracles. These words were spoken by Elagabalus, a Roman emperor. Elagabalus was a Roman emperor who is known today as an emperor. But during his reign, he wanted to be called empress. He was an unprecedented ruler in history, the first and only transsexual Roman emperor who wanted to be a woman. Elagabalus's reign coincided with the period when powerful dynasties took over and ruled the country. He himself came from the House of Servius, which had taken over the empire in those years. This is important because the House of Servius was not of Roman origin, but an African family from Morocco, Tunisia, and other lands. This is the reason why Elagabalus, who had very dark skin, had an appearance that did not resemble a Roman citizen at all. Elagabalus was born in 203, in the city of Homs, in what is now Syria, although he went to Rome from time to time when he was young. In 217, Emperor Marcrinus ascended to the throne and recognized Elagabalus as a threat. He did not want him in the capital and sent him into exile in Syria with his mother and grandmother. In fact, Marcinius was not wrong. Elagabalus' mother, Julia Somaias, and his grandmother, Maisa, were plotting little games to put Elagabalus in charge of Rome. The opportunity they were waiting for came just a year later. Emperor Marcinius made a big cut in the pay of the legions. So the Roman soldiers rose up against the emperor. Wasting no time, the grandmother Maisa, who had the soldiers on her side, proclaimed her grandson Elagabalus, who was only 14 years old the new Roman emperor in the city of Homs. Of course, this was the beginning of a civil war. Emperor Marcinius marched into Syria with troops loyal to him, but the legions, Rome's professional military units, were on Elagabalus' side. The two armies met near Antioch in the Anatolian territory. Elagabalus was victorious. Emperor Marcinius tried to flee to Rome disguised as a messenger and was captured and executed by the legions in Chalcedon now Istanbul. The new emperor of Rome was the 14-year-old Elagabalus, but no one knew what he was like. The Romans had prepared a grand ceremony to welcome their new emperor. The first surprise came when Elagabalus entered the capital, for Elagabalus entered Rome in a chariot drawn by ropes and pulled by hundreds of naked women in a chariot. That was as magnificent as it was interesting. As time passed, the new emperor's lifestyle in Rome became more and more conspicuous. Some days Elagabalus wore woman's silk dresses from China, applied a lot of makeup on his face, and removed hair from his body. Some sources even went a step further and wrote that he used fake breasts and wigs. One of the biggest scandals was the way he chose the servants and the state officials he would take with him. Elagabalus chose the men he would take into his service not according to their abilities, but according to the size of their genitals. For example, with this interesting selection method, he placed a dancer at the head of the special guard regiments. Although there were many men he recruited in this way, the most famous of them were Heracles and Aurelio Zotico. Heracles was a handsome blonde charioteer, and Zotico was a big muscular athlete. These two names had come from slavery to become the emperor's favorite and had gained great wealth by obtaining important positions in the state. Cassius Dio, one of the important historians who lived in those years and shed light on Roman history, wrote the following sentences about Emperor Elagabalus. He had practiced his vices in the room he had reserved for himself in the palace, always standing naked at the door of the room, chattering to passers-by with his sweet and soft voice, clinking the gold hanging around his neck, as prostitutes do. There were, of course, men specially assigned to the roles they were to play. The writer Antonin Artaud wrote that the emperor would go out some nights disguised as a prostitute to be with men. Elagabalus was living life on the edge and getting everything he wanted. But there was only one thing he wanted but could not get. He called the most famous doctors in the Roman lands and told them he wanted a sex change and that he would pay great fortunes to anyone who could make him a woman through surgery. However, no doctor at the time dared to do so. In addition to his controversial private life, Elagabalus also made radical changes in state affairs. For example, according to hundreds of years of Roman law and tradition, women could never enter the Senate.
However, Elagabalus went against Roman law and tradition and made his mother and grandmother senators. He castrated some male senators who perceived this as an insult and opposed it, and sentenced some of them to death. According to rumors, one of his unique methods of execution was by throwing kilos of flower petals on his guests, suffocating them. This elegant method of execution was even the subject of a famous painting called the Roses of Elagabalus. Another problem between the emperor and the Romans was religion. Elagabalus had not been brought up in the Roman culture and beliefs, as he had grown up in a distant land like Homs. While the Romans believed in Jupiter as God, Elagabalus worshipped a sun god called El Gabal. Moreover, he was very conservative about it, and his name, Elagabalus, came from this god. So he tried to impose his god on the Romans. He forbade the people and rulers of Rome to worship the god Jupiter and declared El Gabal to be the chief god of Rome. This, of course, caused great dissatisfaction in Rome. Another event that aroused the anger of the Romans was the emperor's marriages. He had five marriages in total, but two of them were scandalous. The first marriage scandal was, of course, with Heracles, a man whom he called his husband. He even declared him the next emperor. The second one was his marriage to a Vesta priestess named Aquila Severa. The problem was that the priestesses of Vesta took a vow of virginity by dedicating themselves to God, so they were considered sacred. Under Roman law, the penalty for engaging in intimate relations with a man was to be buried alive. Of course, when it was the Roman emperor himself who violated this sacred rule, no one could say anything. However, many Romans perceived this as a great disrespect against their sacred values. In just four years, Elagabalus had overturned hundreds of years of traditions, religion, culture, and customs of the ancient civilization of Rome. The Romans couldn't stand him any longer. Due to his excessive fondness for men and other actions unbecoming of a Roman emperor, he was assassinated in 222 at the age of 18 along with his mother by the Praetorian guards, who were obliged to protect him. Their lifeless bodies were tied to a chariot and dragged through the streets of Rome, then thrown into the river Tiber to leave no trace of him, as was done to notorious criminals and traitors.